Let's take a closer look at the Koh-i Noor Mondaloo's watercolor pencils. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artist at Play. Welcome or welcome back to my channel today. We are going to be taking a closer look at the Koh-i Noor Mondaloo's watercolor pencils. If you've been watching me for a little while, you know I've been on this watercolor pencil kick. I've done quite a few reviews lately on different brands, and I also did a big comparison video with a bunch of popular brands. This was one of them, but I have not done a full video on just these alone. I do have a video from a while back that I did on just their gray tones, but this is the first one I've done showcasing them in general with their regular colors. I thought it was time to take a closer look at this brand because it's fairly inexpensive, but I think you can do a lot with it. And so we're going to see just what we can do with these pencils today. I am going to be working on a drawing. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but there will be some tips and tricks on how to use these pencils. And then I will also just be talking about the characteristics and why I like these pencils, pricing, you know, the regular lowdown <laughs> for a review. And yeah, so let's just get down to it. So I have here the 24 set of the Koh-i Noor Mondaloos. They come in a nice sturdy tin and they are hexagonal in shape. They come pre-sharpened and the color barrels are painted to look like the color that they are supposed to be. And then they have like a painted tip at the end that's gold along with their little paint brush that shows that these are in fact a water soluble pencil. As far as colors in this set go, they have black, gray, dark brown, brown, red brown, dark ochre, dark green, pea green, grass green, yellow green, Prussian blue, dark blue, light blue, cobalt blue, violet, rose violet, rose, bordeaux red, carmine, vermilion, orange, dark yellow, yellow, and white. They offer 72 colors in this line in all, and they do offer sets of 12, 24, and 36, and I believe they also have a set of 72 out there. The thing about these is that they're a little bit more difficult to find. They do offer some sets on Blick, they offer the 12 through 36 sets on there, and they don't offer them open stock in a lot of places here in the U.S. That might be different in other areas of the world, but here I have had a hard time finding them open stock. They are also available at Colt Pens and Jackson's Art Supply. However, last I checked, Jerry's Artarama did not offer them, and that's another place that I like to shop. I did notice a while back when I was first researching these that a place called Hull's Art Supply and Framing offers them open stock for like a little over $2 a pencil, which kind of seems expensive for these. The 24 set is around $27 on Blick right now, and of course, prices are subject to change. But these are a fairly inexpensive pencil in comparison to other watercolor pencils on the market. Last I compared, they were actually a little bit cheaper than the Derwent watercolor pencils. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but last time I looked into it, that was the case. Now, they do offer light fast ratings on these. They are not directly on the pencil, but you can find the color chart online. I will link that in the description below. I can say though, for their price range, their light fast ratings aren't too terrible. And for those who aren't familiar, light fastness refers to how fast or how slow something will fade when exposed to light. So if something is considered light fast, it doesn't fade as quickly as something that is considered fugitive, which fades very quickly. Now, for their price range, they're not too bad. They're not going to be the most light fast out on the market, but for their price range, I I think they're right around what I would expect for light fastness. They use a star rating with one being fugitive and four stars being highly light fast. They have four that are listed as one star and they have a whopping like 27 out of the whole line that are listed as four stars and the rest kind of fall in between. I feel like they actually had less fugitive colors than the Derwent watercolor pencils did. Not to be confused with the Derwent ink tents. The Derwent ink tents had more light fast colors than both. But they're, that's not too bad for their price range. And I, I think that that leaves a lot of workable colors for you if you're deciding to sell the work that you create with these. At the time of filming this, I had not weeded out the fugitive colors because my husband took this reference photo for me. So I don't plan on selling the original of it. So I used all the colors in the set, 
However, I did go through and take out the fugitive colors later on, and it was no surprise that it was mostly pinks and purples, things like that, that had to come out of this set. But it still wasn't horrible. So for works that I do plan to sell that I've used with these, I will not be using the fugitive colors, but I did keep them aside so that I could use them in coloring books and my sketchbook and things like that, because I do enjoy working with these pencils. Okay, now with all that technical information out of the way, let's take a look at how these pencils work. Now I am working on the Arches Hot Press 100% cotton watercolor paper. It's got a nice smooth surface. It has just enough texture for the pencil to grip to, but not so much that you're fighting the grain of the paper. Now, one thing about a pencil that's this inexpensive is a lot of times there's going to be a lot of filler and that can make it difficult for the pencils to blend out all the way. You'll kind of get that grainy texture. And I am getting a little bit of that here, but it's mostly in the places where I don't have a lot of layers. And so I wasn't very disappointed with the way they blended out. I've definitely worked with way worse. And even though these are a fairly inexpensive pencil and they are a pigment based pencil, hence the fact that they have light fast ratings on them, they are super vibrant. And I love that because you don't see that a lot in something that is not dye based. Like a lot of times when something's fairly inexpensive, they'll use dyes, which makes it so they're not light fast. And it also makes it so they're super vibrant. There's no like, I don't feel like the fillers are so harsh that it makes it so that it's not as vibrant as it should be. I'm really happy with the color payout and I'm pretty happy with the blendability as well. Now, as with most of my watercolor pencil paintings, I like to start off with some lighter layers, either with the pencil or maybe just with some watercolor washes. And then I come in for detail with the pencil later on. And some of that also requires being able to blend the later layers with the pencils themselves. And I have to say, these do feel fairly similar to the Koei Noor Hardmouth Polycolor pencils that they have. Those are their regular colored pencils. And I have worked with those for quite a few years as well. I remember they were one of the first pencils that I bought when I first started out with colored pencil after Prismacolor and Polychromos. And I was pretty, I was always pretty impressed with those. They're hard enough to keep a fine point, but no, not so hard that you can't blend them out fairly easily. And I found that these feel very similarly when using them dry. And I was pretty impressed with that as well, because I do like to do dry layers after. I have to say, one of the things that is so marvelous about this medium is the versatility. You have the best of both worlds. You have the watercolor aspect, and of course it's not gonna act strictly like a regular watercolor. It's got different binders in order for it to be a pencil. But you have the versatility of being able to use it like a watercolor, and then to be able to get the detail with the pencil portion of it. And if you're somebody who suffers from arm pain or things like that when you're working with a regular colored pencil, this might be a good choice for you because it's going to speed things up for you and you're going to be able to blend things out easily without using any solvents. And for me, it definitely is easier on my arm than using just 100% colored pencil alone. And so I love that versatility because I love watercolor. I love colored pencils. I like using the two together. This pencil, all watercolor pencils, has that built into one. It's a convenience and it is a versatile medium. And so you're going to see me using a lot of different techniques here. And I try these techniques with every watercolor pencil that I like to do because I want to be able to get the most out of the product that I am using. So you are going to see me use the pencil. You're also going to see me use the palette method where I scribble the pencil on the palette. It's a Caran d'Ache aqua palette and it has a rough side you scribble it on use your wet brush pick it up from the palette and then paint it on to the paper just like watercolor now this is a really nice way to build up subtle layers because when you use the palette method it comes on a little bit more faint than if you were to use the colored pencils right directly on the paper and wash them out that way because there's a little less pigment involved once you've watered it down. And that is great if you want to do something more subtle and you want to build things up. Like these petals were fairly light in that area. I didn't want to jump right to pink and then have it be too bold. Now, if you don't have that palette, you could use just a plastic lid off of some Tupperware or even a plastic Cutting board, just a cheap one from Amazon, as long as it has a little bit of grit to it, it helps a lot. 
And again, this is just another way to get the most out of this medium. You don't have to use it this way. I just like to have my full range of options available to me because again, this product is made specifically to be versatile. It is made for those of us who love to do a little bit of mixed media. If you're somebody who likes to have watercolor and then use colored pencil on top for detail, you don't have to pull out your watercolor palette and your colored pencils and have it all out. You have it all in one kind of product. And these work really, really well for their price. I'm putting them through the ringer here, folks. I am trying all the different kinds of techniques that I like to do with these, and they are standing up pretty darn well. Again, there is going to be a little bit of that grit. They're not going to blend out as well as, say, the Derwin Ink Tents. Derwin Ink Tents tends to blend out very well. And their vibrancy, while fantastic for their price range, may not hold up as well as like an Ink Tents. But again, for their price, they're perfect. I think that this is actually a great starter pencil. And I have to say, I even recommend this over the Derwent watercolor pencils because they are more vibrant. And again, if you want to see my comparison video where I compare these, the Derwent watercolor, the Derwent ink tents, the Albrecht Durer by Faber-Castell, and then I also have the Supercolor and the Museum Aquarelle by Karen Dosh. I have a video where I compare them side by side and you can see how well these hold up to the more expensive brands. If you are starting out with watercolor pencil and you're not sure, you like you don't want to invest a lot of money, but you want something that has light fast ratings because you might potentially want to sell what you make with them and you want something that's going to give you good practice before you invest in the more expensive lines, I highly recommend this brand for that purpose. Now I'm going to be coming through and doing the details on the butterfly. This is going to be a monarch. And I am starting with light layers again using the palette method because I don't want to jump straight to the pencil because then things become more opaque as well. But also, as I already mentioned, if I go in with light layers with just the pencil first, I tend to get more of that grainy texture, as you can see in the lower section of the upper wing. So I prefer to go in with the palette method for under layers because it gives a nice smoother coverage. And it lends itself beautifully to the subtlety that I needed in the early layers of these wings. However, in areas where I wanted to pack a punch with my color, I layered a lot of layers of dry pencil before washing it out with water. So I layered it like I would a regular colored pencil, and then I came in and blended with water, like the darkest areas of the background in behind those leaves. But for something like this, where I'm trying to build things up subtly, I'm gonna come in with some washes first and then bring the pencils on top after. Much like regular watercolor or colored pencil, this is a layering game. I'm coming through with my underpainting, and then I'm coming back through and washing out the layers again. Again, you can still see some of that pencil stroke. You're going to see that a little bit more here than you would with a more expensive pencil. Although I have to say, again, check out that comparison video because some of the more expensive pencils had that issue too. So it's just kind of the name of the game. This is a combination of drawing and painting. So there's going to be some mark making that is indicative of a drawing. And that's okay too. Now, I ended up going a little bit darker on this butterfly than I wanted to, which is funny because one of the reasons why I layered the way I did was because I didn't want to go too dark too fast. But the butterfly in the reference photo was actually in shadow. The way it was tilted down, it was in shadow in comparison to the flowers around it. And so that didn't translate as well in the drawing. And I was actually under the weather while I was working on this drawing when I was sick of... Um, about a month ago now. I was still under the weather while I was working on this, so it is not my best work. And that's fine because really I just wanted to get to know these pencils better and I achieved that. And it still has a special place in my heart because I love Monarch butterflies. They're my favorite. And the fact that my husband got this photo for me, he's not somebody who does art or photography or anything, but he works at a beautiful garden and he saw this butterfly and he knew I would love it. So he took some really beautiful photos for me and sent them to me. I knew that this wasn't necessarily going to be my best work because I wasn't feeling my best. I wasn't making the best decisions when it came to it. However, that is no reflection on the pencils themselves. 
So let's talk a little bit about color mixing. There were a few areas that I needed to mix colors with because this was a fairly limited color palette, right? I only had 24 colors to work with. When you have something that's water soluble, it makes it extremely easy to mix colors. And these colors mixed beautifully. I They still kept their vibrancy. You're gonna see many different ways that I mix the colors, especially in those petals. I did a lot of optical mixing where I mixed directly on the paper, just using layers of pencil. I also did some palette mixing because I used my palette and I scribbled them on there and mixed colors there, especially to get some of those pinks and purples in the petals for the shadows. And then in some of the greens, I wanted to make them a little bit more earthy, not so bright. Some of the colors can come across as a little artificial because they're so vibrant and I wanted it to have a little bit more of a natural look. And I was varying my leaves. I was trying to go between my warm and cool greens, depending on how sunlit the leaves were, how far back they were. And I wanted to be able to mix those colors as well. And in some areas, I actually mixed colors from the butterfly into the shadows of the leaves as well. It's very subtle. You can't necessarily tell, but it gave it a little bit more of an earthy look. And... I feel like they still kept, they didn't get muddy too fast when I was mixing them. They kept their vibrancy pretty well and their saturation pretty well. Though in areas that I did need to do some shadow work, I was able to finagle them around and use colors that were opposite each other on the color wheel to get a more gray or subdued or brown tone to kind of make it feel more earthy and more natural looking. So I was pretty impressed with that. They mixed well. Again, just the pencils themselves mixed well. They mixed really well on the paper when I layered the pencils together and added water. They mixed well optically when I just layered pencils over each other and stayed dry. And they obviously mixed really well on the palette. Again, just another way to use these to their fullest. Don't think just because you have a pencil in your hand that you can't mix them like a paint. There are different, there are many different options so that you can get the colors you want. And you can get a lot done with a very few amount of colors when you work on your mixing. To finish things up, I'm adding some blues, browns, and purples to the wings to kind of help make that orange pop and also imply a little bit of sunlight on the darkest part of the wings because I don't like things to be just stark black. I like to mix colors in with it, make it a little bit more colorful. Here is a scanned in version of my final drawing. This scan is a little bit brighter than it looks in person. My scanner tends to blow out warmer colors, but I digress. This is the final piece. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I am really happy with these pencils, honestly. I think that this is a great budget pencil. When you are trying to get into pencils that have light fast ratings so you can sell your work a little bit, if you're somebody who's just starting out with watercolor pencils and you want to dip your toes but you don't don't want to spend too much. Really, the only downfall to me for these pencils is the fact that I have a hard time finding them open stock, especially here in the U.S., and hopefully at some point that will change down the line. But really, just such a great pencil for their price structure, and I highly recommend them. Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this. I love this little drawing and I'm going to keep it for myself because it is a pretty picture that I did from a photo that my husband took. And I just love that. It's like a collaboration between me and my husband. And I just think that's super special. And so if you do want copies of this, though, I will be selling prints of it on my print site. They're available now. I will link them in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.